everybody. Thanks again for tuning into Sims Workshop. So I hope everyone's having a great day. So today we're going to be talking about The Beholder by Anne and Bright. You know, I was really intrigued by this novel. Um, and I liked it for the most part. I did have some issues um, with it though. And I'll get into those in just a second. I do want to talk about what I liked first. Um, so what I did like was the mythology, uh, you know, and this world. I love the world building in this novel. I think Bright did such a great blending of histories and timelines. I think it's really interesting because you have this um, kingdom of Potomac, right? And that's where Sela is from. You know, Sela is the princess. Senator elect um, of Potomac, and I thought it was really, really interesting how it's sort of structure, structured. Because if you look at it, this story is in some ways um, a new rendition of Snow White. You know, she has a wicked stepmother who's trying to get her out of the picture, who is, you know, slowly poisoning her father. Um, in hopes of putting her own child on the throne. And she's this beautiful woman, you know. So it's a rendition of Snow White um, in some ways, but it, in other ways it's a lot more. Um, it's so much more. You know, she is sent away uh, by her wicked stepmother. She's sent away on the beholder in the hopes of finding a husband um, in the faraway kingdom so that, you know, she gets to stay away. And on the Beholder, she meets Homer and he tells her the story of his friend Odysseus and his wife Penelope. I thought that was so interesting. And that's just one aspect of this novel I like. It has such a great blend of histories, um, it's such a great blend of timelines. You know, she goes to England, um, she goes to the Kingdom of Norway, you know, uh, it's just, there's such a blend of histories here, you know, you've got the, it's not, an, it's a reference to the Pendra Pendragons, it's not the Pendragons, but you know, you've got a reference to King Arthur, you've got, um, references to Norse mythology, you know, of Odin and Freya and Thor, you know, it's really interesting to see such a blend of these cultures and such a blend of mythology wrapped up in this novel because it really does give a foundation of this world. And then you have, it's not just these blends, it's the fact that these are real histories for these people. You know, and I think a lot of times we look at our own um, folk tales and mythology as core um, elements of our culture, of our heritage, of where we come from. And I think it's really interesting how they are made real in this story and how they're sort of all blended together. Because, you know, when she first goes to England, she's seeing, she's, um, meeting King Constantine, you know, there's so much historical references in this novel that really relate this world to our reality, but twist them in a really unique and interesting way. And then her sort of engagement advisor, who's kind of guiding her on how to snag a husband, he's from the Kingdom of New York. I mean, that's so cool. The Kingdom of New York, it's not something you would typically think of, you know, of the United States and you have the Kingdom of New York and it's really interesting to see how all these little pieces fit together in the story to make a really good world, you know. It really is interesting, all these little elements, you know, because they do bring something new to the table. They do bring something fresh. They do create something engaging for the off for the reader and I think it was really well done I really do I love the world building in this novel I love the references to Beowulf I love the references to the Odyssey and I think it relates a lot to 
Bright's passion for reading and her passion and love for literature, um, classic literature, I think it really highlights that. And I thought she did an excellent job with bringing in all these things together and tying them together in a way that worked without being too distracting because you're like, ooh, you're more engaged with the story because of this, in my, in my opinion. So that's what I liked. Um, and, you know, I did like the pacing as well. You know, I thought the pacing of the story was really interesting. I thought this idea of such an old world, and then you have a radio transmitter, and you're like, what? Um, that was also really interesting, because it, in your head, it kind of just doesn't fit, but it worked so well in the story. I thought it was, like I said, she blends different timelines in, very well. I thought it was incredibly interesting to see how the story unfolds because you're reading it, you're kind of thinking, you know, sort of medieval world. But what if it's not a really medieval world? You know, it's so interesting how elusive this time period is and it keeps the reader on their toes and it keeps the reader engaged um, in this world. What I had issues were was, um, which, what I had an issue with were some of the character dynamics and so that. Um, I, I really wanted to like Sela. Uh, that's not to say I didn't like her. I just had some issues with her ultimately. I thought, oh God, how do I say this as eloquently as possible? Um, I think Stella's a strong character. However, she doesn't voice her strength enough. She grows into it, sure. There is some character development there. Uh, Bright does focus on that character development. But... There's too much romance in her life. And, you know, I don't really read romance novels, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't. I'm not really... I read young adult novels with romance in them, and I have no problem with that. Um, yeah, I'll ship characters, you know? But when I go to the bookstore, I don't go to the romance section. I go to sci-fi, I go to the young adult, I go to the fantasy section. Um, I never go near the romance section. Ever. Uh, it's not my thing, but I think in this novel, the fact is there's too much romance. Um, for Stella, there are lots of hints to her attraction with the ship's captain, and you think, oh, she's going to end up with the ship's captain, right? Lots of lingering touches and shared looks. And then she meets Bear in the Kingdom of England falls in love with him. Uh, and then she goes to Norway and she meets Torvin and she falls in love with him. So uh, I feel like Sela, I feel like it doesn't work for Sela as character because I think it either shows her as incredibly fickle or really lonely and desperate for love and neither, neither of those are really um, good qualities for her character because like I said she has a strong voice inside her and those strong voices that strong voice does get to shine a lot so showing her as you know somewhat fickle or even you know so desperate for love because she's so lonely it doesn't fit because she is loved by her father back home she does have people back home who care about her deeply so it's not like she's unloved at home so it doesn't really fit with her character and I really didn't like it because it's like what is she just gonna fall in love with every single male character that comes her way it was a little problematic for me and I wasn't a fan of it I found it incredibly unbelievable because I want to see Stella come into her own on her own I don't want her to become stronger 
just because she has fallen in love with another guy. I feel like that's kind of detrimental and a little insulting to her character. I mean, she's supposed to be a leader, and she is a strong leader um, for her people. You know, she is one of the people. She has calluses on her hands. She's not some dainty, fragile princess. She works the fields with her people. She has the respect and love of her people. But the idea that she's falling in love with every single man that crosses her path is, yeah, it's insulting. It's, it's very detrimental to her character and her character development. And I think it's very unrealistic. And it doesn't really highlight the magic, you know? When she had that first romance, I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And then the second one came along, I'm like, what, is she going to fall in love with everyone? No. Like, when you're creating romance, you want some magic in there for the reader so that the reader feels it and connects to it. So why is she falling in love with every single prince? She doesn't have to, you know? I know the story is about her going on this sort of engagement tour to find a husband. That doesn't mean she has to fall in love with everyone. Uh, I think maybe she shouldn't have fallen in love with the first guy or maybe not this guy what's going to happen in the second novel you know she's still on she's still going to her tour she has to visit five people she's visited two so far she's got three more to go what's going to happen next she's just going to fall in love with every single person i didn't like it i felt kind of insulted as a woman because it's just like and i felt a little insulted as a reader um because I didn't like it. Like I said, I just, it just didn't fit, you know? Especially with her um, relating so closely to Penelope. She's trying to find a way to get out of this. She's trying to find that cleverness that Penelope had so that she can get home to her father. You know, that's her ultimate goal, goal here, to return to her father. That's all she wants. And this engagement tour for her is it's really just an exile she has been exiled so this idea that she's falling in love with every single guy she meets not cool um i liked i like this tension between her and the ship's captain i think it's really good tension but again, it has the reader questioning, are these two going to end up, like, is this romantic tension? Is this built-up tension of him caring for her in a way he shouldn't care for her because, you know, she's the future leader and he's just the super captain, you know? And the way he kind of, kind of is outspoken, and she's like, if you're going to be here and care, then you need to be here and care. Don't be off doing whatever you want and then coming back here acting like you care. See? Then there's more to that. You know, you're kind of reading the subtext there between these two characters. So that's a little distracting. She's just going to keep falling in love with every single prince that crosses her path. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's really my biggest issue with this novel. So, ultimately, I loved it. You know, I did enjoy reading it. I am looking forward to reading the sequel. Um, the Boundless, I am looking forward to it. I love the mythology. I love the integration of different mythologies and lots of literature references and story to build this really new, unique world. It's just Sela and her character development and character growth that I had an issue with. So this was The Beholder by Anna Bright. Annie Bright. Oh, I had a bookmark right here. I had it open. <gasps> No, not that one, not that one. I know. I actually had a bookmark, but my bookmark kind of fell out. So, and I'm short on time today. <laughs> uh, haha, -ha, it was Anna Bright. I was right. Oh, that rhymed. Sorry. So this is The Beholder by Anna Bright. I gave it three stars. Um, if you want to purchase the book, I will have a link to purchase in the description below to bookshop.org. I highly recommend bookshop.org because a percentage of all proceeds do go to supporting local booksellers. Now, if money's tight, which I know for a lot of us it is, check out the book from your local library. They need our support and they are a great resource for the community. And please don't forget to support me um, by liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, Happy reading.